Okay, beloved. Now, this is going to be however much you want to take out of it, however far you want to go into it. When it comes to dates, I'm not going to be putting a whole lot into it. By that I mean as far as declarations or anything of that nature is concerned. This is from the Father. So let it fall on your mind wherever you are. By that I mean whatever level. And know that our Father loves us. That this is a Passover or of Passovers. And you're going to think at the beginning I'm just telling you what Passover is about. But don't go to sleep on me or you'll be behind halfway through and never catch up. That I won't stop to help you. Okay? So stay alert. Okay? Do not make it complicated. Let it flow as the Father gives it. Uh, and let us rejoice in His Word of this Passover following the completion of the temple, which we'll be going into more tomorrow. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You, Lord, for Your Word. Father, the way. That way is Christ, Father, who is the living Word. Give us knowledge for understanding. Let us obey Thee, Father. Let us have our minds as one for the day coming, Father. We thank You in advance in the precious name of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ. Amen. God has always freed our people. God has always freed all peoples of His creation when they are under the yoke of captivity. The only reason he allows a yoke of captivity to go upon them is for correction. So thank him for the correction that we receive today. Thank him for it. For we deserve it. Yes, even the elect, even the kings and queens, we've got it coming. Our fathers, forefathers, they had it coming. But he has shown us the way, the way out of captivity whereby through his truth uh, you can be free even today, even tonight. For he warned you as to what you should do. As this, in the last lecture we learned, uh, what are we to do? Sound the alarm. That's real complicated, isn't it? You know, if you fight against it, it is. But if you flow and if you follow and if you obey, then when his blessings begin to flow, then you realize how easy how simple uh, it is to follow His uh, way. Let's learn, if we may, of Passover. Exodus chapter 12, let's pick it up, if we may, in verse 21 of that 12th chapter. And just let this flow. You've all been through it many times. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel. What did he do? He called for all the elders of Israel, and he said unto them, Draw out and take ye a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover. This was on direct order from Almighty God. Of course, you all know what our Passover is today, and it's essential. It is the blood that Jesus Christ shed upon the cross for your sins, our sins. And then his body, which is the bread which heals your body. But this was the beginning, was that lamb, later to be the Lamb of God. 22. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and Strike the lintel uh, and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin, and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. We are talking about the night of the Lord. Yes, there is a night of the Lord as well as there is a day of the Lord, and if you don't understand the night of the Lord, you won't make it to that great day of the Lord. I don't care who you are. So... Listen and learn from God's Word concerning the night, for the prophecy is entailed within. 23. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. This was the Lord's Passover. This is when the Almighty God would pass through, if you would, the captors. Uh, you see, there's another time coming when another angel shall pass through. He shall be the opposite. And that shall be the night of the Lord also. The prophecy is fulfilled or spoken of in the remainder of the verse. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and upon the two side posts, the Lord shall pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer. Underline it. Will not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. There's a destroyer coming. Do you realize that's one of Satan's names? 
He is coming. He's going to pass over. What will you be doing? Will you be prepared? Will you know what it is that you are to do? Will you have your house prepared for that time? What is your house? It is your temple. And what is that temple? It's the temple we just finished building, and that's why that this Passover is so special. What is the mark? You know what that mark is. I tell you, I didn't intend to do this. Turn, turn with me to Revelation. Hold your place there. Turn with me to Revelation chapter seven. Let's, even if we have to take a little time, let's get this down and let's get it right. I make that chapter, chapter seven. You know that the ceiling of the one hundred and forty-four thousand is coming. What does that ceiling consist of? What kind of mark are you supposed to have the, on the lintel and the threshold of? Your door. Verse 2 of chapter 7, after the angels were told to hold, I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God. What did he have? He had the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels. These are the destroyers to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. In other words, the destroying angels that shall bring in the wrath of God that shall hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. Uh, beloved, that's why the trumpet shall be placed in our backyard. Now turn on with me to chapter 9 of that book of Revelation. And you will understand why it is paramount that you must have that seal in your forehead for the locusts come from the pit. Those locusts we were speaking of this morning until it is a cloud that darkens even the very sky itself. Verse 3 of chapter 9 and there came out of the smoke, out of the smoke, locust upon the earth, and upon them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded. What was it done? It was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any tree, neither uh, neither anything, neither any tree, but only those men which have not. Uh, I repeat, have not uh, the seal of God in their forehead. That, my dear friend, is the Passover of the end times. You must know and understand. Now let us return to Exodus. To verse 24, continuing in chapter 12. And ye shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. In other words, the initial Passover shall be remembered not part of the time, but forever. It would change, it would be added to, and he expects those wise to understand in the last days. And it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you according as he hath promised that ye shall keep this service. When Moses stood on Nebo, and he looked from Nebo into the promised land. Do you know just by chance, I know I've asked this before, what the city is that you're now sitting in, one of the only, only buildings that is now a part of that old, old town that goes back into many, many, many years. The name, my dear friends, of the town which sits at that property line and is in this park is Nebo. That Nebo, the same hill that Moses uh, stood upon and looked into the promised land. That trumpet shall be overlooking Nebo and, pro and, and broadcasting to the promised land. Verse 26, And it shall come to pass that when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? Do your children understand? Hmm? Do your children understand? Or has it slipped up? I assure you, in most families in this nation, it has slipped up. But let yourself not be found guilty of that charge. 27, that ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt. Did you understand? Passed over. Kept the death destroyer away. When he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, uh, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. Uh, don't ever forget to thank him for his blessings. Don't ever forget to thank him for that seal that is in your mind, which is simply the truth uh, of knowing his word. His plan, His purpose, uh, for that is the seal that keeps Satan from being tempting to you when His Passover comes into being. 
for it shall, and we will read of it and document it this night, uh, this night of the Lord. 28, and the children of Israel went away, and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. Verse 29, and it came to pass, this happened now, that at midnight, what time? At midnight. Do you know something else that takes place at midnight? You'll read of it in Matthew chapter 25, the wedding. Five virgins caught short because they attended the wrong Passover. The Lord smote all the firstborn. What are the four firstborn supposed to be? Firstborn to the Lord are the first fruits. God's elect. So we're dealing with that elect. And in the land of Egypt, who are the firstborn of the Antichrist? You are the firstborn of Almighty God. For the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his, his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon. In other words, it makes no difference rank. It makes no difference concerning deception. And all the firstborn, yes, even of uh, the cattle. Okay, let's skip if we may. They, they accomplished this Passover. They did it uh, 39, let's pick it up there in verse 39 of that same chapter. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt. For it was not leavened. You know why? Because they were thrust out of Egypt and, care, and care, uh, could not tarry. Neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals. Verse 40. Now the, now sharpen up. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Verse 41, and it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, I repeat, 430 years, even the selfsame day it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Every last one that belonged to the host of the Lord was delivered. Okay, you understand? I want you to note also the double phrase in the prior verse. They dwelt and they sojourned uh, 430 years, which means they sojourned 215 years and they were in captivity 215 years. Make a mental note. Make a deeper study of it later when I give you the keys in a moment. Uh, verse 42, it is a night. You underline that. It is a night to be much observed. To be done what? To forget it, to let it pass, to take it lightly. No, to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. To be remembered because this is how they were delivered. This is that night of the Lord. To be observed for all the children of Israel in their generations. Uh, to be observed for one night. To be passed off. Not to be remembered throughout all generations the same as the Passover. To remember that night. Uh, for you see, I'm going to show you where there is a false night also. A false day. And a false uh, night. Uh, turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33, excuse my back, please. Verse 19. And the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, saying, In other words, this is the Father speaking. Thus saith the Lord, If ye can break my covenant of the day, and my covenant of the night, and that there should be no, that there should not be day and night in their season. That means if you can change my plan of the sun going down every night, 
But note, he has a covenant with both, both the day and both the night. It was from chapter 1, Genesis, uh, his covenant with uh, the lights. Uh. Then may also my covenant be broken with David, my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne and with the Levites, the priests, and my ministers. In other words, if you can change that, uh, I'll change my plan. Any of you want to try it? Anybody want to go out there tomorrow morning and stop that old son from coming up? You got a staff that'll do that? What I'm saying is, is that his covenant is guaranteed. Because man cannot do that. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David my servant and the Levites uh, that minister unto me. Where are they? Where are they multiplied? There's only a small family. For the others are lost. The peoples of the world lost. But why think small, beloved? For a small family shall become a great nation. And that seed shall be expanded. How shall it be expanded? By birth? No. By instruction. By Almighty God. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, saying, Considerest thou not what this people have spoken, saying... The two families of the Lord have chosen, the two families which the Lord hath chosen. He hath even cast them off. uh, Thus uh, they have despised my people, that they should be no more a nation before them. Thus saith the Lord, if my covenant, listen up for me, if my covenant be not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, if I didn't make... You know, you know how you can tell those ordinances are still in effect? Climb up on the building, walk over the edge, and jump. Now, if you go up, if you rapture, we'll know things have been changed. All right? You have overcome God's divine ordinance of gravity. Gravity is the law of God. Okay? But if you, my friend, do what I think you're going to do, you will suddenly and abruptly come to the conclusion that you cannot change God's law. All right? You can tinker with it in man's ingenuity almost, but never quite. You cannot change his ordinance of day and night. Uh, then will I cast away the seed of Jacob and of David my servant, so that I will not take any of his seed to be rulers over the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captivity to return. I'll send them right back to Egypt. And, and have mercy on them. For I will, rather, cause their captivity to return and have mercy on them. That means Almighty God's captivity because His covenant cannot be broken. Excuse me. Turn me with me to Daniel chapter 9. running you around a little bit tonight, that's good for you, all right? Real good for you. What am I talking about when I say Antichrist is going to have a Passover? You see, it isn't enough that he's going to have a Passover period, but he's going to have a Passover of Christ, or just like Christ, only it will be Antichrist. Verse 27 of chapter 9, the book of Daniel. This is concerning the last week of Daniel. How many days is the Passover? Seven days. How long is seven days? One week. So, one week of the Passover, in a sense, if you like, is symbolic of that last week in Daniel. One day for a year. The last seven years of this earth age. That's important. Now listen to me. One seven-year period, which is the week of Daniel we're about to read of. A seven-year period. I personally believe that period started on 1981.6, 7 or 8. 
concerning the days of this Daniel. You are all aware of it, most of you in this room. Let's read of that week. What happens in that week? And he shall concern, confirm, we're talking about uh, that last week now, confirm the covenant with many for one week, a seven-day period. And in the midst of the week, <clears throat> what is the midst of the week? It's three and one half days. What's he going to do in the middle of that week? In the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Do you know what did away with the daily sacrifice and the oblation? You know, Christ was sacrificed one and all time, that there was no more sacrifice, no, no more Passover of bloodletting. For his blood was the sacrifice for one and all time. How is it then that Antichrist shall do away with our daily communion? I mean, our holy communion whenever we meet uh, two or four times a year. He's going to instill his own, dear friend. When is he going to instill it? Soon after the middle of the week. Soon after three and a half years of that last seven years. Listen closely. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Let, let me quote that to you in Hebrew from memory as best I can. You deeper scholars, check it out. It shall come on the overshadowing wings of the desolator. That's why so many scholars mess up in Mark and Matthew, Matthew 24 and Mark 13, when they say the abomination of desolation. Because in the Hebrew here, it is desolator. Desolation is a condition. Desolator is an enemy, an, an entity rather, the destroyer, Satan. That's who it's going to come in with, on, and around. Okay? Even unto the consummation, that's the end. All those things that consummate the end, and that determined shall be poured upon the Desolate, but in the Hebrew manuscripts, you check it out yourself, desolator. In other words, God shall reign. Beloved, I'm going to take you somewhere now, and I'm going to read you the details of Antichrist's Passover, of Antichrist's bread of life, and of Antichrist's wine, so that you're never deceived so that you're never tricked, so that you always hold dear the night of the Lord as well as that great day of the Lord. Turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 3. Bear in mind the daily oblation, that is the daily offering, ceases at the three and a half weeks. It is important. I'm, I'm sorry, three and a half days. Middle of the week, You'll remember that chapter 2 of Ezekiel is where Daniel was given the commission, the same commission that we carry to go to the children of Israel and the peoples of the world and say those things told us by God to present. Why? You are a... What is Ezekiel? He's a watchman. You are that self-same watchman in these end times. I don't care who you are when you have ears to hear. And I'm going to... So we don't get peoples involved in this... I'm saying all people who have ears to hear, this applies to you. You are an Ezekiel, a watchman. Chapter 3, verse 17. Son of man, this is Ben Adam Ezekiel. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel, therefore hear the word of my mouth, uh, and give them warning for or from me. Does that sound familiar, dear friend? Did we not hear of Sound the trumpet, uh, sound the warning. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If you keep teaching that rapture stuff, you're going to die. You're going to be deceived. And thou givest him not warning. If you don't warn them, if you don't get on that trumpet and blow, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the wick, that same wicked man shall die in his inequity. He's still going to hell as a sinner but his blood will I require at your hand, at thine hand. So that we have 
the seriousness of this false Passover. Let's go then to fix the time in your minds to verse 27 of this same chapter. Verse 27 reads, But when I speak with thee, I will open thy mouth, and thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, He that heareth, let him hear. If you've got ears, you hear. And he that forbeareth, he that can't, let him forbear. Don't listen. For they are a rebellious house. In other words, you're going to them. When the secret to this is when God opens your mouth. Now, this has a twofold meaning. We've been able to teach for many years. But when he speaks through you, and it is guaranteed in Matthew 24 and Mark 13, where are you standing you are standing before, you're not to premeditate what you will say beforehand, for he will give to you what you are to speak at that moment because you're delivered up before the synagogue. Then he opens your mouth and he speaks. You speak the word he gives you. All right? Now you assemble those thoughts. We're at the three and a half years into the last seven. Antichrist system. Now remember it's important, beloved, that you... Make a mental note also and understand the sojournings and the dwellings, see. You understand what I'm saying? The sojournings are those things like the one world system, etc., etc., getting you to that point. The dwelling is the actual participation therein, okay? 430 years. Chapter 4 and verse 1. Let your minds flow. Do not make it complicated. Simplified in the simplicity in which Christ taught. Thou also, son of man, take a tile, take thee a tile, and lay it before thee, and portray upon it the city, even Jerusalem. You will remember Jerusalem is where Antichrist shall appear. It is where you will be delivered up. A tile is a clay tablet about 12 by 14 inches. Okay? You draw a picture of Jerusalem on it. You draw yourself a little old map. And lay siege against it and build a fort against it. In other words, you are its enemy. I assure you all other people will be whoring after this false Christ. But you are to set a siege against it. I want you to count the against. That's one. And cast a mount against it. Two. Set the camp also against it. Three. What camp? You're in it, beloved. And set battering rams against it. Four. I'm sorry, five. Five comes after four, doesn't it? Right. It round about, all right? That's four, isn't it? Well, we're going to get it five times here somewhere. Just hang in there. First, with against it being given five times, do you need any more emphasis than that? Beloved, you better be against it, too. Jerusalem will be the habitation of Satan, Antichrist. God is telling you, when I turn your little old tongue loose, I'm going to use it to accomplish these five things. That, that's a, that, you know, that's a pretty big order. But do you want to be a champion of your people, or do you want to be seduced by Antichrist? Do you want to find him tempting? Do you want to find his bread of life more tasty to you than the bread of life, Yeshua? I don't find the choice difficult. Verse 3, he tells you how to do this. Moreover, take thou unto take uh, thou unto thee an iron pan and set it for a wall of iron between thee. Now what is this? Between thee, that's you, and the city. That city Jerusalem where Antichrist what's this pan for in the Hebrew? It's to break bread on your Passover, all right? And set thy face against it. There we've got another one, okay? Against. And it shall be besieged, and thou shalt lay siege against it. What are you going to do? You're going to say, oh, that's jolly well what's going on over there. No, you're going to lay a siege uh, against it. Uh, this shall be a sign to the house of Israel. What kind of a sign? You sealed 144,000. You told them Antichrist was coming there. 
your tongue has been unloosed and you are being delivered up or you are teaching against this city, saying this man is not Christ but Antichrist. Because you seal them before the fact is what a prophet must do. A prophet that prophesies after the fact is no prophet but a Monday, Monday morning quarterback. Isn't that what they call them? Mm -hmm. They're good. They're really good, okay? Those that seal those children before Antichrist appeared, they are delivered up. God speaks through them and they say, that person was right. Those people know what they're talking about. They're the servants uh, of the living God. And that seal in their mind causes them to come out uh, of his uh, camp. Uh, okay? That's why you're a sign and shall be a sign to the peoples of this world because you have declared before the fact. You have associated yourself with uh, the family that is declaring there shall be no rapture until after the abomination of the desolator stands in Jerusalem. Are you comfortable with that ride? It doesn't make you too popular and it's a bumpy old road. Why do you like it? Hmm? Because it's true, beloved. That's why it's true. Why don't you find that other route easier and more tasty? Let's read on. Remember what we're about to do is a sign, not only to Israel, but to you. Lie thou also upon thy left side, and lay the iniquity of the house of Israel, this is the sin, upon it. You're going to pay for their sin, because you're the only one probably that will understand it. According to the number of the days. Whoops, there's some days in here again, isn't it? That thou shalt lie upon thy... That, that, uh, that thou shalt lie upon it. Thou shalt bear their inequity. You're going to bear their sins. Christ bore yours. Can you stand up for your people? Hey, you were chosen in the world that was. You haven't got anything to lose here. They can lose their souls. Don't mumble because God puts you to a little pain for our people. You got it made. You were chosen before the foundation. So don't worry about putting yourself out a little bit for them. Verse 5. For I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity. What has he done? He has laid upon us the years of their iniquity. If he's done that, we might be able to figure out how many years we're going to have to go through this then, right? Hmm. According to the number of the days, 390 days, so shalt thou bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. 390 days. On the left side. Verse 6. And when thou hast accomplished them, when, when you're all through and it's done, lie again on thy right side. And thou shalt bear the inequity for the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee, listen closely, each day for a year. In Egypt, 430 years. Now, 430 years. Only they are days. He did not say years. He said it is each day for a year. He has shortened that time for you because he loves you. Let's learn a little more about this bread. And then we'll go back to this. Verse 7. Therefore thou shalt set thy face toward the siege of Jerusalem, and thine arm shall be uncovered. You're going to be given something to fight with a little bit, to use here. And thou shalt prophesy against it. What are you supposed to do? You got it right there, friend. Prophesy against it, not for it. And I hear today, 
Oh, dear brother, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Oh, dear brother, dear sister, pray for the peace of Jerusalem so Antichrist will have a nice welcome there. I tell you, it's sad, but it's happening every day. Your brethren are praying for the peace of Satan when they pray for this place, when they're supposed to be paying for the inequity of our own people. Hey, it's, you know... I know they're bad, and I know that they smirk at you, and I know they laugh at you and everything else when you take a strong stand for the truth, beloved, but you still got to do it for them. They don't know what they're doing. You do. That makes you an adult uh, and them a child. And I tell you, our Father has blessed us in as much as He has given us a tool that covers one-third of this earth's surface, uh, that will be one hour a day live from this platform. He is wonderful to us. Well, now, how is it we're going to get all wrapped up in this? God, he set us up here. We're supposed to teach. We're supposed to prophesy. That's what prophesying is, is teaching. Eight. And behold, I will lay hands upon thee, and thou shalt not turn thee from one side to another till thou hast ended the days of thy siege. Do you know what this is? It's a divine constraint. You going to run around and do whatever you want to? Hmm? I don't think so. When that day comes, when we see Antichrist in Jerusalem and we know that time is here, what would you, why would you want to do anything else other than sick him? Hmm? I, I don't really don't know why you'd want to be doing anything else or why anything else would be important because that's it. That's our day. That's the night. And you know what the next day is? That's the day of the Lord that follows the night uh, of the Lord. Verse 9. Take thou also unto thee wheat and barley and beans and lentils and millet and fishes and put them in one vessel and make thee bread thereof according to the number of the days that thou shalt lie upon thy side. Three hundred and ninety days shalt thou eat thereof. This, this bread made with this is the sin and the inequity of our people. That doesn't sound too tasty, does it? Bear in mind who this bread is being made up for. It's being made up for a Passover. A Passover of sin? Measured out for the quality of our people's sin? Think about it a minute. And the meal which thou shalt eat shall be by weight twenty shekels a day. For the time, for the time to time shalt thou eat it. Uh, this, um, of course, continuing on, verse 11. Thou shalt drink also water by measure, the sixth part of an hen, about one and a half pints. From time to time shalt thou drink. Now, this is how pleasant, uh, this is why I want you to be real careful, because this mixture is so tempting. This communion that we're going to take to this Antichrist, what did he say he did in the middle of the week? He did away with the daily oblation because our people stopped taking communion to our Christ and began to take it with Antichrist. You understand that, don't you? This is the mixture. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes, and thou shalt bake it with dung that cometh out of a man in their sight. And you're worried about being tempted? Hmm? I don't think you're going to find Antichrist Passover very tempting. I wouldn't. As a matter of fact, if that wouldn't convert me right there, I believe I'd, it'd be something wrong. I think that would change my mind whether I knew the truth or not. You know, I really believe it would. Bear in mind, I shouldn't have said that because this is spiritual anyway, okay? It means that. And I don't want to throw your minds off from where we are, but the Irish got to me there a little bit, all right? I, I do. When our our people are really so slow, it's God that's blinded them, and they can't help it and everything, but that's quite a mixture. Thirteen. And the Lord said, Even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles, whither I will drive them. They're going to eat this toast to Antichrist. That's the reason of the significance of it, beloved. Then said I, Oh, Lord God, behold. Remember, Ezekiel's having to be an example for them, all right? He's having to do this for his people. You're going to have to bear their sins for them, beloved, before Antichrist. But what you're going to do is a lot easier than this, all right? 
uh, my soul hath not been polluted, for from my youth up till even till now have I not eaten of that which dieth of itself or is torn in pieces. I've stayed with the law of God. In other words, neither came their abominable flesh into my mouth. Now we're getting back to the abomination of the desolator. And then said he unto me, Lo, I have given thee cow's dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. I'm going to let you do this. I'm going to make it as easy for you as I can, is what God's saying. It's going to be a little bitter. It's going to, understand we're speaking in the spiritual now. God said it's going to be a little rough, but I love you, and I'm going to help you out that much. Uh, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will break the staff of bread in Jerusalem. Do you know what that staff of bread is? That's the bread of life. And they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment. That means confusion, amazement. Uh, that they may want bread and water and be astoned uh, one with another and consume away for their inequity. Pine away. They're going to fall in a stupor, is what it means. They're already in that stupor, beloved. It would indicate, as we have studied this, that there are 430 days, for he said, this is a day for a year, not years, okay? We're doing this symbolically. 215 of these days were the sojourning. 215 of them were actually dwelling there. Christ shortened the time, I believe possibly even this time. If I were a student that enjoyed doing dates, I would hastily contemplate doing a little research on the three and a half year period from 1981, the days of Daniel. I would add three and a half years to that. And then I would see how far I would go into that last three and a half years by adding 430 days. For you see, it is Antichrist that comes in the middle of the week. And those days happen while he's here. It'll make you a nice study. 430 days. How many days are there in a year? 365. The middle of Daniel's week came to pass. I wish I, I, I didn't figure this because I don't figure dates. I know it's soon and that's good enough for me. But I believe that it ended... Uh, last year, this year, is Marty, Marty, what, we, we were talking about that just the other day. Yeah, the three and a half year period after 1981.6, seven or eight, somewhere along in there. It comes to the fall of this year, all right? That three and a half year period from that time. One year is 365 days. And you got a few more days after that. That's in the next year. Interesting, isn't it? The night of the Lord. Now, I don't know what you like in your communion, but I'm quite happy with the one I've got now. Okay? But those that are deceived will partake of this daily sacrifice, this daily oblation. I didn't say it. God said it. And we see in this a continuation in God's prophecies of his time. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your truth. Oh, Father, the side trips in studies and research that this opens, Father, in the minds of our people. Hours upon hours upon hours that unleashes knowledge and knowledge and knowledge. Father, we thank you for touching us and for giving us uh, your truth uh, as we prepare our way. Father, I ask that you be with us tomorrow as we continue into that Passover, which is to say the day of the Lord. Father, you're so good to us. Father, we will not let you down. We just ask your patience and your understanding and your love and your blessing in the precious name of the Messiah, Yeshua your Son, and our perfect Savior. Amen. Amen.
115 days of sojourning simply means that that travel you pass through getting there. Okay, that's that's simple, isn't it? Meaning that this would include within the sojourning even the beast, political beast. That is mentioned in Revelation 13:1 through verses 11, where the actual beast appears. This means that a one-world system in the very near future, you're seeing it, you know it, you're aware of it, is forming up, but that it will almost fail. That's how a political system receives a wound, is that it, the political system fails in wound to the head, not a, a flesh wound, okay? If you're thinking in that, you're already deceived and you're going to miss the whole thing. So all that time counts and is included within... You see, the, he's been very specific in this. The axe falls at three and a half years, period, just like that. And you start counting. You start paying for the sins of your people and dear ones. Don't you see how that being delivered up and standing for your people against the Antichrist, how you're lying on your side? In ca he said, I'm going to hold you captive. Antichrist is going to take you captive, but you can still operate, Okay? You can still prophesy. That's what the whole purpose is about. That's why your tongue is released in the prior chapter. Okay? You can still speak uh, and prophesy. I, I think that's beautiful. But uh, all that period is included within that four, uh, 430 days. But now, dear one, caution. I feel this time's been shortened, too. Okay? So don't start trying to figure, boy, I can take my little old calculator. Got it from Texas Instruments. We, we, we Texans, we make them right. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll be good. 